of things I find interesting in your background is you worked on the CO2 laser and having known something a little bit about lasers, this is a fascinating thing. This, this project gave you a lot of insight into CO2. If you can make CO2 lays, that's pretty serious science. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about that and then we'll segue into CO2 as a topic. Well, uh, CO2 is really the uh, gas of life. You know, we're made of carbon and uh, <laughs> it all comes from the air. It, it's not like uh, other things that plants uh, make where they suck it out of their roots, you know. It's really the only food thing that comes from the air. The water comes from the ground, at least for most plants, and uh, energy comes from the sun. And it's an it's a amazing molecule. It's a, like a little dumbbell. At the center is a carbon, and uh, there are two oxygens on either side, and it, it's a linear molecule. It's in a straight line. It will bend like a xylophone bar, and it's that, that bending mode uh, has a frequency that absorbs thermal radiation from the Earth. So that's the main uh, greenhouse gas mode of uh, CO2. It is a, a uh, greenhouse gas uh, in, a, in the sense that it's transparent for sunlight. You, you can put CO2 in the room, you wouldn't notice it was there because you could see through it, but uh, you couldn't feel heat through it very well. You know? and so it's, a, tr it's transparent for visible light and it's largely opaque for infrared light. That was first demonstrated by John Tyndall back in the 1850s, a long time ago. And uh, it not only has this xylophone mode, this bending mode, but it also can stretch in, in various ways. And um, you can, in a CO2 laser, you, you can mix up CO2 with nitrogen and helium, uh, maybe a few other trace gases, and run a discharge electrical current through it in such a way that it excites the CO2 molecule in a non-thermal way so that it will actually uh, lays on some of these funny modes that it has and uh, puts out a lot of power. You know, it's easy to make a CO2 laser with kilowatts of power. It's not very good for short shooting down missiles, unfortunately, partly because there's so much in the air and partly because the wavelength is so long that you can't focus it well at a distance. You know, there's a, a diffraction limit there that the long wavelength doesn't help with. But it uh, interacts strongly with both radiation and with collisions. The nitrogen is important in a CO2 laser because it's in elastic collisions between the vibrational energy of the nitrogen and some of the stretching modes of the CO2 that populates the upper levels that lays. And uh, you yeah. probably know about some of this. And uh, Yeah, just for the general viewers, the idea in a laser is to get the electrons up to a higher energy state. Right. A, lot, a lot of physics and quantum mechanics behind that. That's right. In, the, in this case, it, the thing that's actually producing the radiation is, is not the electrons directly, but it's the charges on this bending and vibrational, vibrating molecule. You know, the carbon is slightly positive and the oxygens are negative. And so if either the oxygens or the uh, carbon move, you, you change the electric dipole moment of the molecule. And, you know, the simplest way to make radiation is to oscillate the electric dipole moment. Most antennas are built like that. The, there are exceptions. The big one is your phone, where it's actually a magnetic dipole moment. But uh, a ham radio operator normally uses an electric dipole moment. <laughs> So a CO2 laser is used in a lot of ways, even cutting material and right. textile factories. Or... Yeah, yeah, it's very useful. You can go on the internet and buy one. They're not very expensive, They're easy to maintain, you know, relatively cheap. Uh, they're used industrially all over the place. 